Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. The richest blessings unto you from our Lord Jesus. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus of Nazareth is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible, God's written word, is our only source and authority for truth. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Together God's people say with hearts of praise and joy, let me hear you. Hallelujah. Well, friends, welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries. Today is February the 9th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, Jesus is blessing this morning open hearts throughout the world, and I trust and pray that your heart is open unto the blessing and the riches that lie within Jesus alone. Well, friends, today we're going to be looking at a text out of the book of Mark. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 7, and I want to begin at verse 1. Now we're going to read the text, and I'm sure that this is very familiar to you, but then we're going to pause and talk about it to see how we can apply it to our lives as followers of the Lord Jesus to better equip ourselves as faithful servants in his service. So let's begin at Mark chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, and these came from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashing hands, they found fault with them. For the Pharisees, you see, and all of the Jewish leaders, except they wash their hands often, they will not eat. And this comes from the tradition of the elders. Notice that. It comes from the tradition of the elders, not the law of Moses, not the law which God had given unto Moses. You see, if you'll do some research on your own, you'll find that there was a later book of laws that was written by the Jewish elders, by the Jewish religious leaders, known as the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D. I invite you to look it up because you're going to find it very interesting and this is what Jesus resisted among the Jewish elders, the religious leaders of his day. They were so occupied in following their own traditions, and yet they neglected following the true law of God. Well, it continues in verse 4 and says, When they come from the market, except they wash, they will not eat. And many other things there be in their traditions such things as the washing of cups and of pots and of brazen vessels and of tables. These all come from their own traditions. Well, seeing that the disciples did not follow the traditions of the elders, they asked Jesus, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? But instead they choose to eat bread with unwashing hands. And Jesus said unto them, well has Isaiah prophesied of you, you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Friends, that is a sad statement, and yet it is true even today. There are millions who consider themselves Christians, followers of Jesus, with their lips, with their confession, but their heart is is far from the Lord. Why? Because they have a lack of obedience unto his word. And the most important thing in all of our obedience unto him is reading and studying and meditating upon his word daily. Jesus himself said, man does not live by bread alone, quoting the book of Deuteronomy, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We are told in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, verse 7, Be strong and very courageous in the Lord, that you may observe to do according to all of the law. This is the written word of God. 
Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Stay on the straight and narrow, which is found alone in my written word. And if you do this, you will prosper in all things that you do. For this book of the law, the written word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, we're told, Therefore shall you lay up these my words, the written word of God, from Genesis to Revelation. Lay these words up in your heart and in your soul. Now your soul represents your mind. So lay them up in your heart where you meditate upon them. Lay them up in your soul where you think and you consider on them. And in verse 19, teach them unto your children. Speak of them always when you are sitting, when you are walking, when you are lying down, and when you rise up. It is the word of God, friends, that is the most fundamental aspect of of our Christian growth. And so again, in verse six, Jesus says, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They won't even read their Bibles. And it's in vain that they worship me. When they travel to their churches, when they come together in their fellowships, when they sing their songs, when they pray their prayers, I recognize none of this because they fail to feed the hungry. They fail to clothe the naked. They fail to visit the prisoner. They fail to love the unloved. They're so busy in their religious practice, their religious duty, that they're neglecting the very principles of my word. And so it's in vain that they worship me. And what's worse is when one truly comes in, seeking the Lord God Almighty, seeking redemption and salvation for their souls, they turn and teach the same things that they are doing that I consider vanity. They teach these young believers the same things, making them even more an occupant of hell than themselves. In verse 8, they lay aside the commandment of God so that they can hold the tradition of men. Friends, these are strong words from the Lord Jesus. Do you sense the severity in what he is saying here? He says they occupy themselves with washing of pots and cups, keeping their hands clean. They do everything to cleanse the outside of the cup and appear to men to be righteous, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. And he said unto them in verse 9, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to take everything that you do that you consider your Christian duty, your Christian practice, and measure it against the Word of God to see for yourself whether you're following the tradition of men or whether you're following the commandment of God. Well, Jesus continues in verse 13, and he says, You have made the Word of God of none effect by your traditions. And in verse 14, he calls all of his followers, all of those who are listening to him, he calls them together and he says, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand what it is I'm saying. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but it is the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And this is very significant, friends. And this is the heart of what I want to tell you this morning. God is more concerned with the condition of your heart, with your emotions and your attitudes, regardless if you're doing cocaine, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, all of those things are important, and we need to get them out of our lives as the people of God. This is true. But our focus needs to be on our inner attitudes. Are we full of patience, gentleness, kindness, meekness, long-suffering, joy, peace, and inner contentment? 
Or do we find ourselves wrestling with things like anger, bitterness, jealousy, envy, hate, prejudice, easily becoming frustrated? You see, these are the things that Jesus and his spirit are most concerned about in our lives. Yet we have a tendency to focus all of our efforts, all of our attention on what we're doing outside, what we look like outside. But Jesus said, put all your attention into what's going on inside. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in your life, in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. And then the things on the outside will take care of themselves. But you can do all you want to clean up the outside, and yet the inside is still full of dead men's bones. And I can't tell you how many people that I have met throughout my lifetime, friends, that on Sunday morning appear to be righteous and holy. But when you watch their interactions with others throughout the week, when you see their attitudes, when they are backed into a corner, Friends, they have nothing in their life that resembles a child of the living God. And so I want to encourage you today to turn your eyes inward and cast all of your time, all of your focus, all of your attention upon what's going on in the depths of your heart. Take them before the Lord Jesus and allow him to do his work of grace beginning in your heart and then watch how it manifests itself outside of your life. You see, friends, the severity that Jesus spoke these words to these religious leaders some 2,000 years ago, he speaks with the same severity to each of us today. Don't make excuses for yourself. Don't pretend that everything is okay. And certainly don't think that God loves you and is happy with you in such a condition because he is not. The Bible tells us that God is angry with the wicked every single day. And if we are operating in such ways, it makes us hypocrites. And if we're hypocrites, we're wicked, we're not righteous. And so we need to heed this warning. We need to be transparent with ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves, no matter how much it hurts. And we need to allow the light of the Holy Spirit to show the darkness in our lives so that we can go before the Almighty and allow Him to make all things right. Well, I know this is a strong word, friends, and I know it's just as strong for me as it is for you. But it is a message that needs to be heard, that needs to be listened to, and that needs to be obeyed. And I trust that you'll be obedient to the Spirit as he speaks to you through our time together this morning, through his written holy word, and that you become doers of the word and not hearers only. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're with us. And I pray that the word of God, as you're reading it every day, and I trust you are reading it every day. If you're reading along with us and reading five chapters of the New Testament every day, it's not too long till the end of the month and we will complete the New Testament once again. And then on March 1st, we will start over. But I pray that you're reading the Bible every day, the Word of God every day. And if you're doing so, I know that your life is being changed because the Word of God does not return void. It will have its work in you as long as you submit to its authority and you allow yourself to be transformed through the Holy Spirit who is the great teacher of the word of God. Well, now as he, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so wills, friends, again, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.